Hey guys, McReeps here and welcome to the first in what is probably going to be many, many, many videos of Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor. Now as you can see I have played 2% of this game. I played it for 2 hours 36 minutes, I recorded 3 glorious episodes and then I realised I wasn't even at the first major quest yet. Now I normally play these games blind and I did in this case as well. And I just realised that the first episode was complete bumbling around, fumbling the keys, it would have just been awful to watch. Second episode was me getting distracted by absolutely everything in the game, because there's a lot going on, and I was just running around having fun. Would have probably been entertaining to watch, but again for a let's play, kinda want to be going for this story. Come on, reaps you bell end. So... Episode 3 was me just realising that, holy shit, I'm, I'm not even at the main guy yet. So we're going to do a quick restart of all of this, just out of, um, just for, for people that have played this and they're like, hey, I hit the play button, I, I get no option to delete my game or anything, just go to save slots. I mean, it might seem pretty trivial, but I've seen people complaining that they can't, um, they can't reset can't reset the game and start over again. People are actually uninstalling the game to do this. So I don't know if this is something that's been patched in uh, from from day one release or something like that. But yeah, just hover over the game. If you're doing keyboard controls, hit X and it'll delete the game. So we've got two empty game slots now. Hurrah! Uh, we're going to just go, go ahead, jump straight in. If you're new to the channel, if this game's brought you here, welcome. It's very nice to have you here. Hopefully my playstyle doesn't drive you absolutely crazy. If it does, feel free to call me a dick or whatever you want in the comments. But then do yourself a favour and just don't watch anything else that I do. Um, anyway, let's carry on. It's nice to have you with us straight into story mode. In the land of The shadows lie. It was here, on the slopes of Mount Doom, that the Dark Lord Sauron was defeated by the last alliance of men and elves. It is here that for two and a half thousand years the Avengers of Gondor stood watch, guarding against a nameless threat. And while the strength of Gondor faded, the power and the malice of Sauron grew in the darkness. He has returned to Mordor. Shadow and flame have fallen on the Black Gate, and no mortal man can stand in its path. Got to say, this cutscene is done really, really well. I love the fact that games are that good these days that you can do all the cutscenes with uh, the game engine. That is a perfect swing for killing chickens. Let's go, Daniel. Bring it on. Home slice. <laughs> Dear Hyle, the mighty chicken killer. Dear Hyle. The Haniel. What the hell? Show your father what you have, huh? He said, Dear Hyle. <laughs> Boom. Get countered. You'll have to hit harder if you want to best your father. I'll put my back to you. So we roll. Hard enough? Nope. Obviously not. <clears throat> Perry, son. Don't forget to block. Perhaps you should not forget to hit. Stay alert, dear. Do you want me to hit you? Your enemy will not right, let's go. Yeah. So the control system is a lot like. Hey, hey, little guy. You're not a soldier yet. Yeah, tell him, Dad. I'll have your gun. He 
He's kicking ass. Might not be a soldier yet, but he's definitely giving it all he's got. So left shift been left shift. Left shift and left click. Remember your training! Get taken down. Oh! Oh man, the takedown system is so good. That's right. Where are they? Hey, 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 hey. Am I going to die in a tutorial? I don't, I don't think that's even possible. So yeah, the the combat system reminds me a lot of Batman, uh, the Batman games. Which I've not played too much of, to be honest. Um, I think I played the first, the old one. Arkham Asylum or something like that? No. Go find your mother. Go find your mother. Keep her safe. I'll be right behind you. Go. But one thing this does, it, like the combat system is so fluid. I've not seen it where the, the animation's gone a little bit crazy. It overstretches sometimes, but it, it flows really well. It's hard to explain without you, you actually playing it for yourself. Why would you banish me from death? There's mother. Playing the sad music to get us more heavily invested in this character. It's not going to happen because we've not even seen her yet. How can we be emotionally compelled right now? I don't, I don't know how we can. Although, our song is pretty cute. And I'll let you hear it. Like the junk in that trunk. I think we we're called Terriel Lar. We got some next gen flowers here, look. Graphically, this game is is something else. It's the best game that I've played. But it's also the we're going stealth kissing. Very nice. Stealth kiss. Next gen stealth kiss. Happy anniversary, my love. So yeah, it's the best Beautiful. looking game that I've played in, in a long it? time, but it's also the, a few friends left in the most recent game that I've played, did you talk to my father? which is kind of sad. Yes, I did. And nothing has changed. He's still very stubborn. I say we go anyway. Dear, I will not come willingly. There must be a better life than this. Not now. But soon. It does a really good, um, I mean, it's, it's really bad at getting you invested in the characters because it, it shows you them for all of 10 minutes. Don't move. I'll clear a path. But it's a, a great little Don't tutorial. Stealth is my only An interactive budget. tutorial. Let's get with stealth on. Get some orcs stabbed through the temple. Stop feasting. We must in your neck. Okay, um, I mean, I love the takedowns. I can't, I can't give them enough credit. So good. Put the sword down, Ranger. Okay. He's a big boy. 
who were a ranger that was going to run away. Oh, we're called Italian, not Terrian. Why does a black hand want to fly? That's gonna hurt. Let's hope it's not our favorite hand, eh, boys? This guy here's got some serious issues. Just let it out. Get a pillow, scream into a pillow. You don't need to beat people all day every day. Sacrifice of blood and bone. Oh, good night, son. A bridge for you to follow. You'll emerge a shadow. This is some kind of ritual. Sacrifice of blood and bone. Oh, oh good night. Man. So I've watched this once already. And the thing that gets me is they don't hold it for suspense very long. It's literally just, hey, cut for it, cut for it, cut for it. And that makes it somehow even more shocking. Come back to me, Elf Lord. Because it, it's like it's inevitable. So we've got this little ghosty guy. He decides to, to come into my body for some reason. What is this place? See for yourself. And so far we've got no idea who this elf is. Now do you believe me, Ranger? What has happened to me? Banished from death, cast adrift between the worlds of light and dark. Curse binds us together within the walls of Arda. If what you say is true, then how do we break this curse? We find the one who cast it on us, the Black Hand of Sauron. Man, I love, I love the Middle Earth music. I love it. That doesn't get your blood pumping. Nothing. that before so Talion and Talion and um, L'Oreal's father uh, Lorith or whatever it is L'Oreal Loris father just said that I killed a nobleman that's why he didn't like his I wonder if we'll get that backstory coming out anytime soon so towers are a lot like the um, the towers in all of these open world games they will unlock and show you everything in the surrounding areas. Very Far Cry esque, Assassin's Creed esque. Um, nothing more, nothing less. All the different little missions, so we unlock new missions. White, white symbols are all side missions, I believe. Um, M is for Marine, which is the currency. I don't know what these are, these things here. I'm pushing spacebar and it's bloody escape. Geronimo! So we are. So we missed one of you at Narcos, eh? Yeah, An must have. mistake to fix. Well, get shot in the face. Get 
to as many of you as we can. Oh. You're dead. Nope. Well, we're supposed to drain him, but we forgot to drain him because I was too busy killing him. But you know what? I'll do. Who's this sneaky little monkey? Take a few pictures. Go back to him. But this guy's the this um elf ghost, he's acting like a, a guide for us. He's the one that's taken over our body. Hold control to grab him and spacebar to interrogate. Yeah, interrogate. What do you know of the black hand of Sauron? That noise that you keep hearing is, is me taking fate. screenshots. Made of thin air. What more? A slave I had. Swears he fought me. I sold him for a cake of grog to give the slaver. Well, we're going to go find Gimub the Slaver. He's our first guy. This is a cool little feature of the game, and this is the whole reason I was really excited about it. Apparently, when you die, different arcs get. Uh, different Urix rather and get leveled up and they, they move into command positions pretty cool but these captains these are the captains of Sauron's army they appear as shadows because you do not yet know their identity by, inter by interrogating enemies you uncover valuable information about these captains press spacebar to learn the identity of this captain tell me all about him Gimub the Slaver um, we've learned about Gimub's identity this will help hunt him down his title, the slaver, gives you clues about his roles in Uruk society. You've also learned that his power rating gives you an indication of how difficult he will be to defeat. The power rating also determines your rewards for defeating him. Okay. And then we get a location, we get a last known location, wink, somewhere up here, at the north of our section. And then we can hit space bar to actually just go ahead and mark him, so we'll do that. He's now marked, he's got the little mark symbol around him. That is where we have to go. If one can trust an orc. Trust has nothing to do with it. His, His thoughts cannot lie. Okay, so when we go into this crazy interrogation mode. It channels the, I guess it's a wraith, it channels the wraith was it within his, the elf guy. Gold icons, advance the story, red for struggle, power struggles and white for regular missions. We've got two main missions available and we are finally in the game. So we're going to have a look at these entries. Uh, it has like a little codex system and for you guys that are like, like know me and know how the channel progresses and the games progress. I like to get in, stuck in with the lore. Now, I left this way too long when I tried it earlier. And this shit builds up quick. I mean, there's a lot of lore to this game. This is basically saying, I'll give you a rundown of the first couple because I've read them already. This is basically saying, um, Marion is a, a currency that the elves created. And it's made of mithril. On one side, it's got the, the anvil, the elven an anvil. On the other side, it's got the dwarven door. Um, Durin's door, I think it's called. Yeah, it's down here. Durin's door. Just to give a little nod in honor of the dwarves. So it was a currency that became popular, but when the Dark Lord, Mr. Sauron, as I like to call him, as he came back, he tried to destroy uh, destroy it all, destroy all the Merian. And it's becoming ever increasingly rare. And it is now 
it's a relic, I, I believe. It's now classed as a relic. Yeah, the supremely rare relics. I should have just read it, it would have been bloody quicker. So we've got all of these codex entries to look at. So Mordor basically tells you Mordor is not a very nice place and it's all these creatures and destruction and even the Uruks can't tame these beasts that are here. That's pretty cool. Morinon is basically the massive gate that is between Gondor, I think, and uh, Mordor. And the, the walls are impregnable. You just cannot get through them. This is where a lot of battles end because each side has the, the forces on either side of the wall. And it's a bit of a stalemate. The rangers took over this place and, and put up two towers. And I think they called them the, the Spike Tooth Towers or something like that. Let's have a look over. Um, yeah, they put up some towers. Towers of the Teeth, they called them. Narcost and Carcost on either side of the Great Wall. And that's where the rangers defended from when they defeated Sauron in the Battle of Dra Dagorald, 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 something like that. We've got Odin. Odin's the valley where all the big armies and everything meet when they're going to attack Mordor. This is the this is the staging area. It's a, it's a massive um, wasteland, basically. That's good. For getting your armies together. Orden is Mount Doom. Mount Doom was is basically the heart and soul of Mordor. That's where the ring was created and forged. That's where the ring is destroyed ultimately, and it's what will erupt if Sauron manages to build his forces and basically kickstarts it again. In Baradar, that is the Tower of Sauron. When when he got defeated in the in the first battle, the tower crumbled, but the foundations are indestructible. So when he's come back, this is where he's retreated to. It's also where the they manufacture the Uruks, these um, these intelligent, fearless orcs that we're, we're fighting. So that's all of that stuff. We have the lore, you have the different people, obviously us. Tells us a little bit about um, our relationship with Lorith. Lorith's dad was the captain of the guard and we, uh, we ran away to make a life together. And ultimately ended up on the, I think it was on the Black Gate. Darhil or Daharl or I'm going to call him Daryl, our son. He wanted to follow in our footsteps as a ranger. Rangers of the Black Gate, basically, just says there was there was a lot of them. Um, they staged and, and defended Gondor from the front, which was the towers that they built on the the big gate that we talked about. And they defended from there, but years and centuries and centuries of um, plagues and everything whittled them down to just a, a core group of rangers who were really good at what they'd done, but they just never had the numbers. So when Sauron returned, they, he basically ran them off. Wraiths are all the spirits that are uh, like noblemen, warriors, everything, all the spirits that are trapped between life and death because they can't. Um, they can't find peace and death. And Sauron will ultimately have control of these guys when he gets his army up to full strength and he gets his powers back. And then we've got Uryx, the great orcs. They're manufactured in... What's that place called? Uh, Baradar or some shit like that. Basically Sauron's little tower. Baradur, I think it is. This is the guy that we've seen in the first cutscene, the Hammer of Sauron. He actually, he started off on our side. He was a good guy. He was actually a medic. They called him Stretcher. And what happened to him is he served his life as a medic, patching up everybody in war. And he, he went up Mount Doom when Sauron was defeated and he picked up the mace, his mace. And he instantly, obviously, took in all the evils and everything that was Sauron. And his view of what he was doing changed and it changed to the point of he was no longer helping people that needed to be helped he was um he was saving people that wanted to die gloriously in battle so in his head he's now killing people and giving them that death in battle that they they so desire 
ultimately it went a bit cuckoo. And uh, when Sauron returned, he's he's obviously right in there with the big guy. You know, I mean, he's a bit of a right hand man. He's a he's a brown noser, as I like to call him. The Tower of Sauron is a, the other guy that we've seen. At first, I thought this this was a, an actual place, but it's the big guy that we've seen. Uh, not much is known about this guy actually. So is an evil. His his evil has grown. So is his stature. He was trapped inside an armor that will not grow with him, and his agony is exquisite. So that armor that you see, it's not snug. It's it's cutting into him, and he's in constant agony. Uh, he was once a Numenarian, and he and as he can recall, he either built a tower or he was locked inside one. So I think he was captured, put in the tower, put in this armor, and just tortured. Uh, his appearance is horrific. To stand near him to, is to feel the revulsion that he feels for himself. Even his fellow captains despise the tower, although they have come to rely on his great corrupting evil. So he just oozes fucking nastiness. He is he's a bad guy, um, and he just loves to slaughter people and make them feel the way that he feels. So he's a good guy to have on your side, really. He is he is the loony that you like. Oh, that job's a little bit. That's a little bit politically incorrect. You think the tower will do it? Yeah, yeah. Send the tower. He'll he'll do it. Puppies? No worries. They'll be skinned in no time. He he's basically um, Middle Earth's version of Corella Deville. If Corella Deville was a sword wielding psychopath. The, uh, the Black Hand of Sauron, this is the guy that ultimately cut out with Throats in the start of the cutscene. So a lot of people think he is Sauron. Um, legend has it, and rumour has it rather, that he's Sauron. But he's not, he's just a lackey. He's just another brown noser. But his faith and devotion to Sauron is unmatched. He's also a nasty bastard. Everybody, everyone on both sides of the... Um, both sides of the fence despise him, they fear him because at the flip of a coin he'll just kill them so he's a bit of a bad lad and then we've got the talent of the black hand these are basically like this guy's um, excuse me, this guy's protectors his little crack team now these are picked these are hand picked by the black hand um, he goes to the vats in Baradur where the Uruks are getting made and he'll he'll take them out of the vats, he'll pull them out I don't know if he pulls them out when they're ready or not, but he drags them into existence in pure agony and they serve him with without hesitation now the interesting thing about these guys, there's five of them there's always five of them if one of them dies and the, they don't get its body back to the, the vats at Baradur then the hand will kill all of them, They'll, he'll sacrifice all five of them, and the reason behind that is, when one dies, they take the body back to the vats, and he feeds they must break the body down or something and he feeds the um, the essence of the of that guy, the dead guy, to his successor, and they become stronger, and if he can't do that, he's like, fuck it, start again so can you imagine that? Could you imagine serving someone where if your buddy died in combat because he was shit that you'd have to drag his... You'd, you'd at least hope he was skinny, right? Because you'd have to drag him all the way back to the vat. Otherwise it's a death sentence for you as well. I'm pretty sure I'm just looking into that a little bit too deep. So we're going to keep up with these um, these things. Oh wow. That's, like a, that's going to create a door. That's pretty cool. We're going to keep up with the codex for sure. Hey, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we happy? But so let's look here. We have uh, three options over on the weapons. We've got the swords. We've got the sword, bow, and dagger. Each of which have rune slots that you can unlock. And um, runes that you can discover. So we've got a rune available for the sword, which is going to go ahead and put it on. This one is defiant to the end, and it will give us a never, never surrender. It lets us gain an additional last chance to return to the fray in combat when the Uruks actually 
go to deal is that finishing blow. So it is definitely worthwhile. Let's get our defiant to the end in there. Are we done? Everything okay? We can check out Sauron's army by looking here. This episode is going to be slightly longer than other episodes um, just because of the start and everything. I hope you guys don't mind too much. We've got this guy over here and this is the one that we're target locking. This guy's in a power struggle with someone. He's a long way away on the map. He's, he, as you can see in the top right, he's over to my west. Um, let's find it. Ratbag the Coward, you are one handsome guy, Ratbag. Oh, you must be a real lady killer. Oh, we can zoom out. Uh oh. Oh dear. That sucks. That's one thing I don't like about this game, is it doesn't lock the mouse. We can zoom in and out of the right mouse point. Gotcha. Ratbag, I like your, I like your attire, buddy. That's very nice. You got like squirrel skulls on you and all sorts of things. The orcs have fleshed out, or the Uruks have fleshed out really well. He's a coward. So let's see the next page. He's scared of everything. Scared of Margie flies. Scared of ghouls. Scared of grogs. Which we'll discover what they are shortly. Uh, what about this guy? What's he scared of? Wait, he's a power 5. What's this guy? Power 3? Oh yeah, he's even easy. Easier. Old rat bag is, is definitely easy. To learn details, we must find intel or interrogate another captain. So if you interrogate a captain, you can pick one of these guys. The pretty cool system. Anyway, we spent long enough in the in the menus. 